50 years ago. Oh my word. Top of that hill, that's where it all happened. Yeah, we were all kids just playing there just behind us. Someone said there's something going on up Cheyenne's Hill, so we all came running over. There it was. What did you see? Flying saucer. Fifty years ago today, a flying saucer landed on the Isle of Sheppey. We're going to find out what really happened out on the marshes. 1967 was the year of the Summer of Love. Science fiction was exciting the imagination of the British public. TV screens featured Doctor Who and his foes terrifying viewers hidden behind their sofas. You think the Cybermen will help you? The threat of nuclear war seemed to be a button push away. And the nation was in the grip of UFO fever. I'm an investigative journalist and I am absolutely fascinated by government archives and files of any description where there might be stories hiding. And I've spent two decades combing through um, what, what are known as Britain's X-Files, the Ministry of Defence UFO files. And there was, a, there was a UFO report that was coming into the Ministry's UFO desk at Whitehall on virtually every single day of 1967. But one night was different. Sunday the 3rd of September, 1967. Strange lights in the sky were being reported across North Kent. The following morning, a flying saucer appeared to have made a crash landing. We'd been here about five minutes. There was all sorts of activity going around, people milling around. And I remember just down the bottom of the hill, a police car turned up and people didn't know what to do. Were they scared? No, I don't know. And they started coming up the hill, just along here, like this. And as they started getting close, they started gesturing to us, all the kids, move away, move away. And they were frightened, I think, as much as we were. The police had received a phone call about a mysterious object. Not knowing what it was, they began to form a cordon. But there was no doubt in Ray's mind what he saw. Well, it was a flying saucer. with <laughs> no two ways about it. It was there. It was the old flying saucer shape. You know, it was uh, silver, um, big dome with the, the thing around the outside. Yeah, it was flying saucer. Reports were coming in of even more landing sites, from the Thames estuary to the Bristol Channel. As you may have heard, six of them have been found in a straight line, starting at Clevedon in Somerset and ending on the Isle of Sheppey in Kent. Each of the flying saucers began to release a low, ominous tone. Was Britain under attack? The government didn't want to take any chances. At RAF Manston, a whirlwind helicopter was scrambled to bring in the Sheppey saucer. Were we about to make first contact with alien life? No. Oh, there's another, oh, there's another there's scientist or yeah. MOD person. The flying saucers that, turned out to be a great big hoax oh, by apprentices, yeah. led by Chris oh, Southall and Rog Palmer, from the Royal Aircraft Establishment Technical College. Let's take it up to the table, Rog. Yeah, it's... Um... They organised the hoax as a rag week stunt to raise money for charity. The sort of UFO fever had built up a month or two before mm. this lot went out. That, that's something, actually, because people are dying for something nice and exciting in their lives, and newspapers are dying for good, exciting stories. Oh, well, it's nice that they're useful. I'm sure the aliens would be delighted. Along with a team of fellow apprentices, they built the six flying saucers and delivered them to their chosen landing sites in the dead of night. These model flying saucers were very well made. The students had obviously spent a lot of time and energy um, setting these things up, making them look authentic. And when people found them and they were making a loud beeping noise, you know, it, it convinced people. It wasn't just the strange noise the apprentices used to make the saucers believable. They also took the time to design their very own extraterrestrial life forms. Chris had <coughs> boiled up an assortment of different potential aliens. Which was flour and water cooked up together just to give us this 
amorphous, horrible, slimy, and who knows what, you know, once they get inside, you know, there's this stuff that you can't identify, you know, which may be dead alien or it may be live, you know, and it may be about to come out and start eating you or, you know. One of the sources, when they actually drilled into it, because it was full of this compacted sort of papier-mâché mess, it actually exploded and showered the police officers with this, with this stuff. And if it had have been some kind of um, radiation hazard, how would they have dealt with that? It would have been a, it would have been a, a disaster area. And in, what did they do? They just washed it down the drains. Rog and Chris soon came clean. The great UFO hoax became front page news. We've got press cuttings here from American, Canadian, Australia, thought, yeah. Australian newspapers on the front page. As well as making the headlines, letters and donations came flooding in. The apprentices raised over £2,000, but not all the feedback was positive. Dear sir, <laughs> next time you start your flying saucer joke, just give a little thought to people like my son, aged 11, who couldn't rest all evening. He had to see the news all night on TV and had to have a light on when he went to bed. He loves all spaceship plays on TV and he thinks they're fine. But last night he had me worried. It wouldn't be so bad if he hadn't, didn't have a hole in the heart operation years ago. Your joke wasn't really so good, was it? Mrs. You win some, lose some, eh? Yeah. And when it comes to UFO landings, Dr David Clark believes this story proves all the conspiracy theories wrong. I think it's one of the most important um, stories in the Ministry of Defence UFO files and it's the one that uh, is, is often the most overlooked because I think for people who like to believe that we are being visited by aliens and that the, um, the Ministry of Defence and the US government know this and that they're keeping it secret for some bizarre reason, I think this story, when you look at it, shows that that can't possibly be true because if, if aliens really had landed and this is an example where people, for a few hours people thought aliens really had landed. How could you possibly keep that secret? And what became of the flying saucers themselves? Well... We were fairly upset by the fact that one had been blown up by the army, which isn't a very nice thing to do to the aliens. Mm. They, they'd sawn one open, which oh. was a really good way of finding the smelly stuff. Yeah, well, what was worse, one is accidentally dropped when yeah, they were trying was... to helicopter it back to the airbase yeah, and actually it actually dropped, dropped it. It. Yeah. it. It was very clumsy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fifty years on, let's hope if aliens do decide to visit, they receive a slightly warmer welcome. <laughs> <laughs>